Okay, 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 I understand that. Now tell me, what does that last piece of string remind you of? Well, that reminds me that we're all out of string, Bert. He says he means street muppets may seem like mere puppets to you, but they're the new myths in our TV-nurtured culture. To millions of children and their parents, they've become distinctive personalities, each representing in his exaggerated fashion particular human quirks and foibles. A cross between puppets and marionettes, the Muppets were created by Jim Henson back in the 60s for Sesame Street, the slick, fast-moving, multi-million dollar television show whose phenomenal success turned children's television into serious business. Uh, I'm fine, Grover. Just Quick. fine, Farmer Quick. Grover. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That's Henson, manipulating Kermit the Frog and doing his voice. Henson wouldn't bring Kermit along to our interview because Kermit has a habit of taking over his creator. Their relationship of 21 years standing is that special. Yep. Right, that's a cue. He's the closest character to me, I suppose, and um, the fact that I've done him for so long, and he's, he's, very, uh, he's very much a part of me. Um, uh, we originally, we were not going to use him on Sesame Street, but people there putting the show together really wanted him as part of the show, and so we said, okay, look, he can be part of it as long as he can also do other things. So that was our basic arrangement. Some of the characters were written and designed for specific reasons. Uh, Big Bird was was created to uh, act out the emotions of a small child, being able to make the mistakes that kids make, and a child can watch this situation happen and enjoy it. Ernie and Bert were created that way uh, to just handle virtually any kind of a learning situation in a, in a two-man team, like a comedy team. Oscar, again, was, was sort of created again to be able to handle the uh, the hostility that kids feel and sort of uh, negative, angry emotions, and be an outlet for it, you know, so the kids could see this and, and see that it's okay to feel this way. Jim Henson was in Toronto recently, not for Sesame Street, but to produce a children's special, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. We took the opportunity not only to talk with this Walt Disney of our time, but to see how he puts a show together. Henson, who's now 40, has been fascinated by puppets since he was 16. There's something about puppets that are, it's the same kind of thing that, uh, why do people like dolls? Why do children like dolls? And, you know, there's, there's something about a small, uh, uh, inanimate thing giving it life that, uh, that's appealing. things that that we do best are visual we do uh, since the puppets themselves they're they're uh, they work symbolically they're they're little symbolic representations of life and so the winner of our first annual talent contest is the nightmare do it one more time that was good Irene just one more for protection and so the winner of our first annual talent contest is the nice thing about the puppets is that they are they have dimension and they are you know, sort of cuddly and warm and we get we end up with a, a kind of warmth I love it when uh, when people hug the characters or the characters hug each other and there's kind of a warm touching thing that can happen there what type of person do you get to work your puppets? Well, when we're looking for people, uh, we look for people with a, uh, a theatrical background and um, so that they have a sense of performance. And then we look for people who can who can put their performance into their hand. I don't know. Peter, listen. Bite my finger. <laughs> Bite my finger. I think we're both in a position for this. Oh, okay. Come in slowly. Why is it that no one swears on the set? 
Or no one, even if something goes wrong, you just sort of pass it off? Oh, let's see. Uh, you haven't been listening close. <laughs> there, is, there is occasional, yes, bad language around. But usually, uh, we're, it's a very nice group of people down there, and we're enjoying working. We always enjoy working together. A lot of the people that have been with me have been with me for, oh, 10, 12, 15 years. Henson chose Canada to make his Christmas special, his biggest and most ambitious to date, because he likes our TV studios and the people who work in them. He's a perfectionist, and he's been known to tape one scene as many as 103 times to get it just the way he wants it, which is one reason this show is costing close to three quarters of a million dollars. We use all, almost every possible way of, of controlling a puppet. We, um, some of our things um, in this particular show that we're doing are the most elaborate we've ever done. Again, in the same, in the same show, we're doing a lot of things uh, with a whole floor in the studio and cutting holes for the puppets to, to work the hand puppet up through the hole and then occasionally using marionettes, the string puppets, to uh, walk in and out for big wide shots. Few men have used the tools of television as creatively as Jim Henson. His work, particularly that on Sesame Street, has had a deep and lasting impact on your children and mine. However, Henson believes that we have to be careful about the way we use television to influence children. I don't like the idea of sort of trying to uh, plant, uh, you know, plant ideas with them. And you can't really make your children grow up to think a certain way by telling them to think that way. But what you do is you raise children the way uh, you live your life. And you see TV as a means of doing this in part, at least. Yeah, right. It's a, it's a conveyor of attitudes and so forth. Uh, and I think we need to be very careful about the attitudes that, uh, that children see on television. And of course, we all know how awful television is in general. We don't have, I don't need to go into that, right? I think, you wouldn't have time. Uh, no, I, you know, with my own children, uh, it's very often, even my little uh, six-year-old is up until, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night, seeing a lot of different kinds of television. And I think, uh, you know, it is, it is very bad, the, the amount of stuff that, uh, and, uh, the violent attitudes and so forth that she sees on television. <laughs> to Jim Henson. He was an obscure puppeteer on a late night television show in Washington. Now that his Muppets have made the big time, Henson is under pressure to let them advertise products. So far, and we can be thankful for this, Henson has resisted such pressures. It has to do with the same uh, situation of um you know, particularly the Sesame characters, and Kermit with his connection to Sesame Street, uh, thus has a has kind of won a place with the children. And once he has once he has that position, you really can't take advantage of it by having him try to pitch something to people. Oh, wait a second! Hold on! Hold on! Wait a minute! We'll try to guess what the Russians are up to after this break. Mm -hmm.